Rugby and Australian rules football are two games developed around heavy hits and hard tackles. It is a mark of a man by how quickly he can stand up and continue playing, even after these types of injuries. As a result, head injuries and concussions are an unfortunate part of both codes. Fears of concussion are rising, mostly because of the unknown that is associated with it. Geelong footballer Tom Lonigan, who in 2006 nearly lost his life in a non-field collision, which resulted in trauma surgery to remove his right kidney, recently commented that his biggest fear in football is being concussed. Studies in the United States are currently taking place in an attempt to understand the long-term effects that physical contact and repeated head injuries have on the brain. They are being undertaken on deceased NFL players who have donated their brains in an effort to understand what these repercussions are. Some researchers believe that repeated subconcussions, without being knocked unconscious, can be enough to risk permanent brain damage. However, Australia's leading sports injury prevention researcher, Professor Caroline Finch from the Australian Centre for Research into Injury and Sport and its Prevention says these studies are problematic. The trouble with those studies in America is that they are done on brains of dead people um, and they could have died from other causes and maybe the changes in the brains could have been due to other things to do with concussion. So what we need to do is studies in people who are still living. The effects of concussion are apparent in the short term, as Dr Des Dara from Roval Health explains. OK, look, it can vary enormously um, to ones where there's only very brief loss of consciousness and then they're a bit dazed and confused for a while and, you know, within a couple of hours they're almost back to normal, they've lost a bit of memory but they're pretty good, um, to much more serious ones where, you know, they can have longer periods of, of uh, loss of consciousness and longer periods of being dazed and confused and really, you know, in some cases still not being quite right for, you know, a couple of weeks afterwards. But when it comes to the long term, we don't know enough. In terms of longer term impacts of injury, we don't actually have much information because no one's really followed up these players for long terms. So we don't know what the long term impacts of the injuries are. It has sparked a debate about whether or not helmets have a place in these codes. There have been continual calls for helmets, like this, to become mandatory in heavy contact sports. But there is currently no evidence to suggest that they reduce the risks of serious head injury or concussion. I, I don't think that we should be going down that path quite yet. For example, the Australian Football League has put out a policy statement um, a couple of months ago saying that it actually doesn't support compulsory helmets. And we support that stance because there isn't enough evidence that they work. The AFL statement says that there is no definitive scientific evidence that helmets prevent concussion or other brain injuries in Australian football. There is some evidence that younger players who wear a helmet may change their playing style and receive more head impacts as a result. Accordingly, helmets are not recommended for the prevention of concussion and that helmets may have a role in the protection of players on return to play following specific injuries, for example, face or scale fractures. I mean, I could say to you too that there's only ever been one study, proper scientific study in Australian football, Australian rules football for helmets, and I did that study uh, about 10 years ago. And at that time, we got conclusive evidence that helmets weren't going to work. 18-year-old Kilsyth footballer Nathan McCulloch has worn a helmet for his entire football career. No, I never played football without a helmet. And what's the reason why you wear it? Because uh, when I was uh, younger, I was diagnosed with epilepsy. So the doctor said, uh, if you want to play football ever, you've got to wear a helmet. There has been a few instances where he has felt it as help. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, one time in under 12s, I uh, got uh, knocked down and caused like, an epileptic fit. So I think it might have... I'll help with that. But overall, he feels it doesn't do a great deal to protect his head. Probably a little bit, but uh, it's still, like, if, it's still gonna, if you're going to get injured, you're going to get injured, I suppose. In terms of Australian rules, testing has shown that, to be effective, these helmets would require a hard outer shell, but this would be a potential harm to other players. The evidence in terms of the football codes and so forth is not so strong. And partly that's because the sort of helmets that a lot of the players uh, have access to to wear in those sports aren't going to withstand the sort of impacts. That's the first thing. So there is a concern, for example, in Australian rules football that if you had a helmet, and this also applies to rugby, that was strong enough to sustain all impacts, you know, they'd be running around with a big sort of motorcycle helmet on. There has also been the suggestion that players are likely to adjust their playing style if they wear a helmet, protecting their head less. In terms of our other... Um, football codes and so forth, people think that people will play harder or that they might be targeted by other players. Those are legitimate concerns of people, but when we've actually conducted the study scientifically and objectively, we actually haven't found any evidence that that occurs. 
Helmets are certainly more common in rugby than they are in Australian rules, but this could be put down to the fact that these soft padded helmets, which are seen in both codes, were specifically designed for rugby. Well, the helmets that are available, you know, the soft shell scrum caps, have yeah. actually been designed for rugby. Okay. And the sorts of impacts that players get, you just got to watch the, the play. You know, we have all the, the marking sort of behaviour in Australian rules football and so players get knocks to the head you know around the temple area in AFL but when we're talking about the rugby football codes it's more at the base of the neck so the helmets have been designed for rugby league. While we don't know enough about the long-term effects of concussion in sport all experts agree that from the evidence gathered helmets should not be made compulsory in heavy contact sports. Yeah I think look always in the medical front we'd like to see hard scientific evidence on things before we're prepared to go out there and say this must happen and we just haven't got that hard scientific evidence yet. Andrew Wiles reporting for Spectrum.